Now here we have two Digital Equipment Corporation PDP-11 computers from the late 1970s. One's a PDP-1104 and the other's a PDP-1134, this is more powerful than that one. Now I've got them both out because there's a bit of confusion between them, or at least I'm a bit confused about them. I got one of them, which I believe is this one, but I'm not sure, along with another PDP-11 from a place where I used to work. It was in the chemistry lab and it was they were used to control a high energy uh, x-ray machine, metallurgical x-ray machine. This one, I believe, I got from a friend and it, the one I got from a friend, whichever it is, but I think it's this one, uh, hadn't been stored particularly well. It had a bit of water damage and bird shit damage. So I thought I'd better attend to that. I mean, I've left it for too damn long already, but uh, pulling them out, it's not immediately obvious that one is in worse condition than the other. There's a bit of marking that might be water damage on, on that panel there, but uh, nothing stands out. I was, my memory of it was that it was in much worse condition, but we may find out worse when we open it up. Now, the two front panels are almost identical except for the model number. In fact, that's the only difference, 04 and 34. Uh, some of these have a, a minimal panel, just a couple of buttons, but these have the full panel. Instead of a hexadecimal keypad, these have an idiotic octal keypad, 0-7. Octal has no place in a 16-bit machine. It's just daft. One of Dex's greatest mistakes, if you ask me. But anyway, enough ranting. I could go on about that for quite a while. Uh, let's have a look at the back of them. They're quite similar at the back. Uh, this one's got a power cord that goes directly into the power supply with an American plug on it. That one has an IEC connector. Uh, I don't know if this is wired for 120 or, or it can be set to 240. Uh, and there's an earth wire, something else. And that one has a wire going through the angle bracket coming from the back plane. And it goes somewhere into one of the boards. This one possibly is meant to do the same thing, but it's not connected to anything. Another difference that's a bit curious is they both have the same power supply, an H777, with the same option number. The same specs except for the 5 volts. It's 25 amps on this one and 32 amps on that one. So I'm not sure what's going on there. You'd think at least the option number would be different if the current rating was different. We'll find out a bit more as we go along. Okay, now I'll, I'll turn them up on their sides so that we can have a look at the board complement. You can see they've both got a similar amount of boards in them. This is the 04, this is the 34. I'll brush these numbers off and I'll take some photos and record what's in what position that there are nine slots on these and then I'll pull out the boards and have a closer look at them. Th these PDP computers, both 11s and 8s, uh, came in a couple of basic form factors. Both of these and my other PDP-11 have the vertical back plane where the boards come in horizontally. Other, other ones have the two back planes lying horizontally and the boards plug in vertically. And of course then they would stick up above this so there's a, an extension of the chassis to cover the for the boards to fit into. But uh, these aren't that tight. Obviously that other type can hold twice as many boards. You can see down here that there are one, two, three, four, five, six separate edge connectors and sets of fingers. So boards come in either single, just one slot, they can come in dual like this one, or quad, or hex like the CPU ones at the other end of the cage. I've always liked these little handles that DEC put on their flip chip modules, but the hex the, the large boards don't have them, and they're the, mostly the processor and memory, I believe. 
and the numbers are much easier to see on the flip chips. The numbers on the these metal framed hex CPU boards are embossed on the metal there. A bit harder to see. And there they are without the cards installed. Just notice on the 34 there's turn, uh, connectors for the fan not attached and that one doesn't even have them. Let's have a look at all the boards. Now there's the board map for the PDP-1104. A brief description of all the modules. And for the 34, the B, small B is just indicate a blank space. And the dashes indicate a board that extends over two, four or six slots. So we'll look at the 04 boards first, starting from the top. That's the single board central processor. Uh, DEC used other as well as the numbers for the modules themselves, they had subsystem numbers. So a KD11-D was the central processor for the 1104. Uh, those are 74181 ALUs, I believe. Yeah, pretty sure that. Yeah, 74181 arithmetic logic units, four bits each, so four of them for 16 bits. But that's the whole processor on one board. And little stickers coming off. Try and keep him with it. A few bodge wires here and there. Next up is the M7847. There's two of these in the 04. This is a 16K by 18 bits, two bits for parity. Or error checking and correction. Uh, MOS memory. The 11. 05 that I have has actually got core memory, but we'll look at that in another video. And curiously, the 1104, which has no memory management, can only address up to 64K, had two of these in it, so it had 32K. Whereas the 1134, which has memory management and can address more than 64K, only had one of these. Which is a bit strange, I think. Anyhow, it's just another one of them. Big 5 volt regulator, isn't it? I think. Some internal deck part number. Now, something's got hot here. These resistors here, so. Looks like an issue to be investigated on that one. The other one, yeah, no such problem on the other one. So, hmm, nasty. Next up is the M9301 YA. I'm not sure what the YA is. I guess this is a, a bootstrap card. And it's, it's got 512 words of ROM on it. So, the YA probably indicates what sort of device this is intended to boot from. And I suspect it's with uh, a couple of 8-inch floppy disks. Dip, switching, dip switch. Uh, term, yeah, and resistor packs. The Unibus needs termination. Unibus is the back plane. Now, <laughs> yeah. I've never been fully in depth on PDP-11s, but I have a vague idea of what's going on in there. And, but uh, my memory is a bit rusty and some of the arcane stuff I probably never knew properly, so some of what I'm saying may be incomplete or erroneous. I'll try to avoid saying things that I don't know anything about. Okay. Next is M7859, which is the programming console interface module. This, there's a ribbon cable from the front panel on both these machines that 
plugs into this socket here. Uh, both machines have a ribbon cable to the front panels, which go into that interface card. Seven five one five four. That's a D multiplexer. Little gold chip up there. I'm not sure what he is. Backside, more of these stickers. I've got to try and keep them off the board, don't I? M7856, part of the DL11 W subsystem, serial line unit, real time clock option. So, crystal for the maintaining a real time clock, which presumably causes interrupts it some regular intervals. Uh, not sure what goes there. A lot of dip switches on this guy. Evidence of cooking. Maybe even there a bit too. But also there. More resistors getting too hot. Hmm. Oh and that I imagine is a UART. So that's, that might be what that's for, uh, RS232 connection. It's hard to see all the chip numbers here. I don't know if there's any uh, RS232 interface chips there. We're just going through this quickly. Not going to go into a lot of detail. Next up, 7258. A line printer interface module with a Centronics interface. I don't know why... I've got that. Oh, this, this is out of the O4, so I don't have any peripherals that came with that thing. So, who knows? I've got a bunch of uh, deck printers, but they must be all to do with other systems. So, I could uh, plug in an old Centronics printer, I guess. <laughs> yeah. This is a M7846, which is a floppy disk interface module that connector has been broken now there's one of these in the 34 as well uh, and I it's supposed to connect to an RX02 floppy disk but I've got two RX01s which are dual 8 inch floppy disks one of them neither of them would have come with this because this this O4, I believe, came by itself with no peripherals, so those floppy disks must be with other things. It's looking a bit ratty and a bit dirty. All these boards can do with a bit of a clean. Yeah. And finally, the Terminator module. Now, there's one of these in every system, and it's got to be plugged in furthest away from the processor. And, and this is hazy, but there's a a signal chain, daisy chains through all the boards. It's called the bus grant. It's to do with arbitration of which which board controls the bus, and that creates a physical priority scheme by the one that's closest to the processor has priority over all the others. But finally, if nothing else uh, stops that signal getting through, it'll end up at this card, which has a bit of logic to send back a signal saying. Nobody wanted the bus, I guess. Again, not sure about that. So, yeah, the 34's also got one of these, of course. So that's the PDP-1104. The 34. The processor for that takes two modules. This is the 8266, the first board. So this is the control module of the CPU. but seems to be in okay condition and he mates with the M8265 this one which is the data paths module so this has all the the uh, well it's probably got the uh, ALU on it that might be what are they 7418 ones again
yeah, simple way it went. So there's the ALU. There'll be other registers and things and, you know, data paths, 16-bit data paths connecting it all together and switched according to what the control module says uh, under direction of microcoder, I presume. Not sure if it's microcoded. There doesn't seem to be any ROMs on the control board. Maybe there is. Not sure. And then it's got a it's program interfacing as well for the front console, the 7859. Just like the other one. This connector going to the front panel. We have another 7847 16K memory module. This is from the 34s and it only had one, surprisingly. Dip switches to set whereabouts in the 64K address space it sits. Bit of heating there as well on those resistors, same resistors. Looks like a hotspot and we've got a few dents in the regulator. That's not nice. M7856, as with the other one, real-time clock and crystal oscillator. Uh, possibly a serial interface. I think that's, that's pretty sure to be. Looks like a bit of general heating over that area there. Why would that be? Hmm. A 9312 bootstrap terminator module. Unlike with the 04, which had a 9301, this has a 9312. So, uh, and empty sockets or for boot code. Maybe those two are ROMs and there's room for more. The, the, those wires that I pointed out before that went from the power supply to somewhere went to these connectors. It's for the system to know when there's power. It might be part of a power fail system as well. But uh, it checks when the power has been stable for a sufficient number of microseconds and then begins booting from what I can gather. And another 7846 floppy disk controller interface with a slightly less broken connector. Must have been some ham-fisted bastards getting to this. This could be a bugger to fix those, but they don't have to be physically perfect to put a connector in them. Now, this 1134 had a few third-party OEM interface modules, including this strange thing. No markings, but you could buy these uh, connectors from deck and get your own boards made and put them on. But this, I don't know why they didn't bother with just making it a, a proper quad module. In fact, it's not even a quad module, it's a three and a half module. There's one, two, three, and there's not even enough room for a third socket there. But why didn't they just, I don't know, why not just put in, takes up the same amount of space you couldn't you can't use those two slots for anything else so why not just uh, make it a bit wider and a bit easier to design so that came and looks like a bit of bodging on the back a lot of solder flux uh, that and a couple of other single height modules came with it These must be something to do with the X-ray machine, so that pretty much nails down. The 34 came from work and the 04 from my friend. But the 04's boards don't seem to be too bad. There's the evidence of that the water damage and bird shit that I was worried about don't seem to be there. Finally, we have a, another 9302 Terminator module that goes at the end of the slot. Actually, there's one other that is with this, and it's a very simple board, 
and it's plugged in next to that. And it's just got a few loops, so I think that this might be a bus grant continuity card, but I thought they would have to go into intermediate slots rather than the last one. Maybe not. That's detail of stuff that I'm not very sure about. But I'll no doubt become acquainted with as I try and fix these things. So that's the boards. Well, that was it for the boards. Just a, a quick look at them all, and probably half the stuff I said was bullshit, but no well. <laughs> um, this is the back of the 04. Everything needs a good dusting down and vacuuming, of course. A lot of connectors on the back of that power supply. Um, those three go up to the bus. That goes to unknown, places unknown, and that one goes to the uh, bootstrap board to tell it that the power is ready, start booting. I'm going to try and find out if this thing is wired for 240 or 120, and uh, I won't do much more on in this video, but I'll just, I'll, probably, I'll take these covers off the power supplies, we'll have a look inside them and see if there's anything obviously bad in there. I don't know... I have to do a bit of research on how to power these things up. Can they be powered without any load? I'm not sure because I want to bring it up with a variac and slowly let the capacitors reform a bit as well. And then start playing with board by board, seeing how, seeing how it goes at each step. Okay, I'll take the covers off this power supply. Okay, there's a the cover off. Uh, no big electrodes, I mean, so this must be a switching supply because it's got quite a bit of electronics in it. Uh, this input terminal, 115AC, 230AC, everything's wired up, so I'm going to have to do a bit of reading of manuals to find out whether or not this is set up for 120 or 240. Circuit breaker and a fuse, relay. Big fan internally, so there's two fans in this thing. So I wonder how noisy it's going to be. Probably fairly noisy. Another heat sink down the side there. A few other diodes and transistors on, on that top heat sink. Not sure what's on the back of this bottom one. There it was, a quick look. Uh, so it was a bit rambling. This is all stuff I've what I did know, I've forgotten most of, and um, not that I knew that much about it in the, in the first place, so I'm doing a bit of learning as we go. And then again, if this is a switcher, why have they got this giant transformer? Where, where are the electrolytics that go with big linear power supplies like that? It's curious. I've got to do some reading about an H777 power supply. In some future video, not sure when, I will be looking at trying to turn power onto these once I've ascertained its requirements and whether or not it can be run without a load and what the minimum amount I can plug in is. Bring it up slowly, check for problems, check the output voltages are good and then start playing around with um, sticking CPU in there and, and the front panel board and talking to it. There's, there's oodles of documentation on these things. Uh, so yeah, the, I've got quite a bit of actual hard copy documentation as well, but the, the, there's no shortage of it on the on the web. So I've just got a lot of reading to do. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, give it a, give it a like. Maybe subscribe if you want to see more more of these. And catch you later.